All right, today we're going to continue with kinetics and talk about the form of the rate law, or determining the form of the rate law. And you may or may not remember this, but we always have to do this experimentally. And so whenever we do these problems here, we're going to have experimental data to help us um, solve this. Okay, how data is created. Essentially what we have to look at is concentration per time. All right, so remember when we talked about kinetics with our rate laws, we always talked about it's the change in concentration, okay, over the change in time. So obviously if that's going to be how we look at how things change, then we need to have data. So you do this a couple of different ways. Um, you've got your time, and then you've got your concentration values over here as well. And this is just a plot. Remember when we do concentration, it has these nice little brackets. So this is just graphing. We're going to do a lot more graphing this unit than we have in a long time, uh, really all year, or for both years. So you've got your moles per liter, and then we've got the time. And again, it just shows you some of those instantaneous rates when you take the slope of those tangent lines. That's where those little triangles are coming in there. Um, so for example, in the beginning, the rate is 5.4 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter over liters times seconds. Um, and then with the steeper slope, that's the faster rate that usually happens at the beginning. And then things start to level off as the concentration goes down and there's less of it available. So again, here, if you take the tangent line you're going to get a rate of 2.7 times 10 to the negative 4. So this is where we get data from, and sometimes we have to use graphs to interpret it. Now we're going to use what's called the method of initial rates. We have to use this to find the form of the rate law, and this is the order. Um, now remember, the rate law is going to have some standard things to it, and when we write these out, I'll show you here in a minute, but ultimately here we're looking at the order. We're looking at um, on the outside of that concentration, there's going to be a number up here. We're trying to figure out if it's first or second. Wow, that's an X. Okay, um, if it's first or second order or zero order, which are primarily the focuses of this class. So we choose one reactant. We find two experiments where the concentration of that reactant changes, but all of the others stay the same. So it's kind of like a controlled experiment where we only change one thing and attempt to change everything else. We write the rate laws for both experiments. We divide the two rates and we use log rules. And don't panic. This is going to be fairly straightforward. Um, again, if you haven't done logs in a little bit, maybe worth it to read the appendix in the back of your textbook or um, search for a video on logarithms. There's tons out there. So then we follow the same technique for the other reactants. Okay, so let me show you how simple this is. All right, we're back, not back to, but we're to the reaction when we're going to take ammonium. We're going to react it with nitrogen dioxide. We're going to get um, nitrogen gas and water. Okay, now remember we are primarily going to focus on the rates from the perspective of the reactants. So that's why we have initial concentration data of ammonium and nitrite. Wow, I didn't, I'd said nitrogen dioxide. Okay, that should be nitrite. So we choose one reactant to start with. Here we're going to choose ammonium. So what we're looking for is two experiments where everything else stays the same and ammonium is the only one that changes. So if you look at two and three, two and three we held nitrite constant and we changed the other one. So that's exactly what we did. Two experiments where the concentration of that reactant changes, but all the others change the same. So we're looking for experiment two and experiment three. And if you just pause for a second, I know we did the lab the other day, and if you just think about how we were changing those concentrations, we were trying to get this data right here. Um, and then you have your initial rate. It gives you your rates. Uh, 1.35 times 10 to the negative seventh. Um, in experiment number one, and then experiment two, and experiment three. So you've got three rates that go along with that. Okay, write the rate laws. So remember, when we write the rate law, it's always the rate, okay, so that's this, then you've got this k constant, and then you have your concentrations raised to the x and the y. So again, you've got the rate is equal to k, this time it's ammonium, and we're looking for that x value, okay, and then we've also got the nitrate back here for just a second. Oh. Okay, this is experiment number two, and then you've got the nitrate, ah, 
and we're, again, we're solving for that y up here. So if we look at the first two, we have experiment two and experiment number three. We divide those two rate laws. Okay, well now when I say divide them, I realize that did not give you a lot of work. I literally am going to put, this is my division line. Now the nice part here is the reason we make these stay the same is that guess what? We could totally cross those out. So now it's just a matter of doing this math. Well, two point, remember the exponents are the same here, so we can get rid of those. 2.7 divided by 5.4 is 0 0.5. 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.2 is 0 0.5. So that's where this came from, is the work. Okay, then I use log rules to solve for the order, which just means I have to find the x. Well, 0 0.50 to the first is 0 0.50, so x is 1, so the order for ammonium is 1. Don't overthink these. These are some of the most straightforward calculations we do with kinetics. You just divide it. Remember, so now that we know that that 1 is there for the rate law for this reaction, I'll put the brackets in there just to um, show us, you have the 1. And we don't, we write the one. It's not like we ignore it and we just pretend it's there. Okay, and we say first order. Now we do the same technique for the other reactants. So for nitrite, we're going to use experiment number one and experiment number two. So experiment, because nitrite changes and ammonium stays the same. So we go ahead and we divide these suckers. We write, ah, well, a little technical difficulty here. Let's try that again. Eraser. Okay, so I write these rate laws and then I divide, er, there we go. Okay, so we've got the rate, we've got the lowercase k, which we'll come back and solve for later, and then we have our concentrations. Now you'll notice we put the first order in there because every once in a while you'll get data where it's not exactly the same. So you have to know that one, then you can use that one to solve for the rest. But it is the same here, so we're going to go ahead and cross this off. Sorry, we also can cross off the k, I should have showed you that last time. So if we do this data, like the 10 points and the negative 7 can be crossed off, 1.35 divided by 2.7 is 0 0.5. 0 0.050 divided by 0 0.1 is 0 0.5. Again, we get y is equal to 1. For the most part, so this is our rate law. Okay, if we says write the rate law, this is it. And you put rate is equal to lowercase k times ammonium to first order, nitrite first order, and that's it. Um, again, most of the ones we're going to see are going to be 0 first or second order. So you're not going to have to worry about getting here and knowing too many funky things on log rules. Okay, so the overall reaction order, we just add them up. We simply sum up all the orders. So for this reaction, x and y are both 1, so we say the reaction is second order overall. Okay, second order overall. And I just want to mention this. Sometimes it corresponds to the coefficients, sometimes not. That's why we have to determine this rate law experimentally. Okay, now we can find k using the values from any of the experiments given. So once we establish the rate law, all right, remember our rate is equal to k, well, I did a bad job of writing my equations out here, to the first order, and then nitrite. I don't have it in front of me, so I can't even tell you which one that you pick, but you just go back and you find, take one of those experiments, and you plug and chug for k. So you're going to multiply these two, and then take that and divide it by that number. So there you go. Just did it all out, and you get... 2.7 times 10 to the negative fourth liters over moles times second. Okay, here's my little warning sign. The units for lowercase k will be different depending on the order of the reactant. So it's not always going to be liters over moles times seconds. Um, one of the first together problems that we do is literally going to be just to show you where we get the reaction, where we get these units from. And this is why I left the units in here, because if you take this, this mole is going to cancel out, this liter is going to cancel out, so all you're left with is moles over liters times seconds. You're going to get some other scenarios where all of a sudden you get liter squared, mole squared, um, and I'll show you where that comes from, but the units are different on lowercase k. I'm just pointing that out. Okay, here's another one. Um, this is, no, not the reaction we saw in lab, but what you need to do is find the concentrations for bromate, bromide and hydrogen ion. Um, so to find bromate, we're going to take experiments one and two. Why? Because bromate changes. 
and everything else stays the same. So that's why we're going to pick 1 and 2 for bromate. So if we take those and we divide them, I've got everything crossed off. This is what makes the math really simple. Okay, again, I get back to this 0.5 equals 0.5, so x is 1. So for bromate for that reaction, for that equation rather, we can now plug in its first order. Not to the first power, first order. It's just a different, little bit of a different mindset. Okay, now for bromide, we're going to pick experiments 2 and experiments 3. Why? Because everything else stays the same, and bromide changes. Okay, so we got staying the same for bromate, staying the same for hydrogen ion. So again, we put them over each other and we divide. Um, now, it actually would not matter which one that you put on top. It depends if you want to, honestly, eyeball it. depends if you want to use whole numbers instead of fractions. If I flip this upside down, instead of getting 0.5 is equal to 0.5y, I'd get 2 is equal to 2y. So it just depends if you want to use whole numbers or not. Again, we get y equals 1. So when we were to plug that in, we would put, um, that's my negative sign, and that is also to the first order. I'm not sure why I wrote that. All right, and then we got one more. We got hydrogen ion. Hydrogen ion, we're going to pick experiment one and experiment four. This is, again, part of the reason we were doing so many trials of that kinetics lab. So, write those down. We get everything crossed off that's the same. So on this one, we get 0.25 is equal to 0 0.50. Now you will notice I did plug in the x value for first order here and the y value for first order here. We didn't need it, but there will occasionally be some data sets that you get where everything is not the same, but if you got to this point you could still solve it by actually plugging those numbers in. Okay, so if we solve for z here, we figure out that um, 0 0.50 raised to the second power is going to be 0.25, so instead of first order, it's going to be second order. So this time for hydrogen ion, it would be written like this, to the second order, not second power, um, just clarifying. Okay, so now we've got our rate. So we've got the rate is equal to lowercase k, first order, first order, second order, fourth order, overall. And remember, that just came from the fact that we added those numbers together. Okay, so th again, these are these particulars are some of the most straightforward you're going to do with kinetics, so don't overthink it. Now we get to solve for the rate constant k. So we pick any experiment, we plug in our rate, and then we plug in the concentrations. So, now, let me show you on the units here. So they chose experiment number one. You got your rate of 8.4 times 10 to the negative fourth, then you've got your three concentrations. You've got 0.1 raised to the first for the bromate, 0.1 raised to the first for bromide, and 0.1 raised to the, s and you still have to raise it to the second power even though it's second order for hydrogen ion. Now let me show you how the units cancel out. Well, only one of those moles and only one of those liters cancel out. So, now remember this one is raised to the second power, so this is where the mole cubed comes from. It's where the liter cubed comes from, and the seconds is always only to the first power because the rate is the only one that has the second. So the unit here is 8.0, but it's liters cubed over moles cubed times second because the whole thing, the overall order of reaction was fourth. Now just as a little note, um, when you get to these higher exponent values, there are some patterns where, you know, if it's raised to the fourth, these are going to be to the third power, and, and you'll hopefully see those patterns as we do a few of them all together. Okay. I just want to keep the current color scheme. There we go. Oh, there we go. Let me cross that off. Okay. Um, this just shows you how the units cancel out. Okay, I'm going to stop here, and then I will continue with integrated rate laws.